So now we're up to number seven. What value of delta t would ensure that the calculated value would be within one of the limit? All right, so we have found that if we want our value to be within 10 of the limit, we can use delta t is, where did I end up with that final statement? we can end up with delta t is less than 2.923. If we want to be within 5 of the limit, all we have to use is a delta t that's less than 2.067. If I want to be within 1 of the limit, so let's just go ahead and solve um, r of delta t minus l is less than 1. Again, if you haven't done this, you should do it uh, on your own first. But let's cut to the chase. We know what the pattern is here. We know we're going to end up with 1.17 delta t squared um, is less than 5. We know that we're going to have a graph of 1.17 delta t squared. Actually, it's less than 1 here. Sorry, less than 1. Delta t squared minus 1 is less than 0. And we know it's going to be, we're going to have a parabola, and we're going to have uh, our x-intercepts here. We're going to get our x-intercepts by solving 1.17 delta t squared uh, equals 1, so we're going to have delta t equals square root of 1 over 1.17, and we can go to that on our calculator and just put that here, and we're going to change the 5 to a 1, and we get a decimal, and I know that the solution to the inequality is delta t is an element of the interval from negative 0.924 to positive 0.924, but what that amounts to, since our delta t is greater than zero, delta t is less than 0.924, and if I want to verify that result, all I have to do is do um, y1 of 0. Point, is it 924? Yeah, 924. All right, and my uh, r of delta t is negative 2194.748. So um, r of 0.924 is equal to negative 2194.748. And we can see um, that l is negative 2193.75. So you can see that, in fact, I got within one of the limit. Now, here's what's critical. I can do that process for any real number. If I want to get within 0 0.01 of the limit, all I have to do is delta t is less than the square root of 0 0.01 over, um, what is it? 1.1, uh, no, I've forgotten where, what goes where. Oh, it's like this. Um, delta t is less than the square root of 0 0.01 over 1.17. So I just do that. This is not uh, asked in the sheets, just uh, to explore further. 0 0.01, I get 0 0.0924. So if I use uh, delta t of 0 0.0924, so I could just go, you know, um, y1 of 0 0.0924 now. So let's just insert a zero there. And I got negative 2193.7599, so it's really negative 2193.76. So I am, in fact, within 0 0.01 of my limit, which is negative 2193.75. And I can do that for any value, 0 0.000001. Uh, we just go 0 0.00001. How many zeros? I put five. So I just go up here, go somewhere in there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And I just use uh, 9.24 times 10 to the negative fourth. In fact, I can see that this 9245 is always coming up. I'm just doing times a power of 10. All right, a negative power of 10. Right, so we can use delta T as less than 9.24 times 10 to the negative fourth. So I can get within any specified distance of the limit, I can attain any proximity to the limit for any real number that's greater than zero. And what's the smallest number that real number that's greater than zero? There isn't one. In fact, the only thing that is blocking me from getting to the exact value of the limit of um, negative 2193.75, the only thing that's blocking me is a hole in the graph 
a hole in the graph whose radius is zero. So is it really there? It is. It is definitely there, and it is causing all this heartache. All right, but that this process, this is the idea. We can use smaller and smaller values of um, uh, of this small this this proximity to the limit. So um, that proximity that we're talking about is called epsilon. So this is a Greek letter epsilon, not to be confused with is an element of. Although by the way, this symbol for is an element of comes from the Greek letter epsilon because e epsilon is the first letter of the word element. But you distinguish them by context. All right. Determine a formula. So now what we're going to do, instead of finding smaller and smaller values of delta t, let's get a formula for delta t that depends, crucially, on epsilon. So what is it? Have you determined what the formula is? If you've not paused, take a look at uh, our pattern here and see if you can say, uh, if I wanted to be within any epsilon of L, what value of delta t would I use? So the answer is following this pattern that we can see here, delta t, or I guess we, we're calling it, no, no, we're not calling it delta yet, delta t is less than the square root of epsilon over 1.17. So what's important about this, this is a function. Delta t is a function that depends on epsilon, and it is defined for every positive epsilon. In fact, it's a positive number for every positive epsilon. This number can get as small as you want, this number can get as small as you want. Any proximity you want, epsilon of L, you could get that close by using delta t equals square root of epsilon over 1.17. So we're going to put that into a, together into a definition next.